Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is Brett. Welcome to this week's Friday on the Turntable. Uh, today is Friday, February 8th, 2013 AD, and I'm here to talk about Concrete Blonde and their second album from 1989. This is free. This was their second album released in April of 89 on IRS Records. Now, before I get into this uh, album, I wanted to just kind of give a little bit of context of the year that this was released and show you some of the other uh, other records that came out in that year. Just kind of a nice little sample. Peter Murphy's Deep, 1989. Red Hot Chili Peppers' Mother's Milk. First uh, Chili Peppers album to feature uh, John Frusciante. Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood. Ah. Ministries, The Mind is a Terrible Thing to Taste. Classic. Nine Inch Nails debut, Pretty Hate Machine. A couple other ones. The Cure's Disintegration. And how about the Colts Sonic Temple? So just to give you a little idea there, 1989. As you can tell from uh, from what I just showed, it's a pretty good year for music. Actually, a really good year, and I can't even believe 1989 is 24 years ago. Uh, just insane. So, getting back to uh, Concrete Blonde. This is the free album. Like I said, it's their second album. The Concrete Blonde's been known as a three-piece, and but on this album, they actually expanded it with an extra guitar player. This uh, guy here named Alan Block, or Alan Bloch. But uh, the, three the three main people were John Epp Napolitano on vocals and bass, uh, James Mankey on guitar, and Harry Roshikoff was on drums, and he was later replaced uh, after this album by Paul Thompson, who played in Roxy Music. And James Mankey, original, or interestingly enough, going back 18 years before this, and 15 years before the first Concrete Blonde album, he actually was in the band The Sparks, and he was on their first two albums, 1971 and 1972. And his brother, uh, what's his name, Earl? I think it's Earl. He actually engineered this album as well as the first one. It was self-produced, the band produced it, but uh, Earl Mankey engineered it. And Earl Mankey also played in Sparks. He was on the same two albums as, uh, as, as James or Jim. And he also produced The Runaways and he were engineered Elton John, The Cramps, The Beach Boys, The Nymphs, The Attics. So quite a wide range of of, uh, of artists that he worked with. James Mackey really, in my opinion, has one of the greatest guitar tones ever. I mean, if you listen in this particular album alone, uh, the, his tone on Scene of a Perfect Crime, or if you listen to um, some of the his guitar solos on the Bloodletting album, like um, oh, on Joey, or just some of the other tracks on there, his sound is just like crystal, and it's just this pure... It's chimey, it's just incredible. So for those of you guys new to Concrete Blonde, I'd like to preface this by saying, this isn't necessarily my absolute favorite album. I think that my favorite album has to fall, or has to go to the one that followed it up, uh, Bloodletting, which had their the kind of their really big uh, breakthrough hit with um, Joey. But that album, you know, tends to get talked about the most and this and it kind of overshadows this album a lot, which which only came out a year before Bloodletting, and I just think it's just a fantastic album. Uh, the track um, there's two singles released from it: "Happy Birthday," which was a UK single, and the rest of the world, which is arguably the best Concrete Blonde song. Just a really playful melody. The lyrics are it's just a great song. And then God is a Bull at the opening track, which just kicks off with just this raw, angry energy. Great bass line, great synchronized guitar riff. Just really, really intense. And the track Sun, which wasn't a single, is phenomenal as well. And just a couple other favorite tracks on here as well. What else did I write down here? Help Me is just another, another great one. Interesting, there's a Thin Lizzy cover on this one. The track It's Only Money, which was on... Uh, Nightlife from was it seven nineteen seventy four appeared on the Thin Lizzy album Nightlife. I'll pull this out and show you. 
It's got a little quote here from Leon Russell on the uh, on both sides here. Once it's a black and orange inversion here, and you got a band photo there. And like I said earlier, this was on IRS. So you see the uh, guy from IRS. Now the band Concrete Blonde. It's been said that because uh, they were they had a different name when they signed to IRS back in '86, and uh, label mates apparently Michael Stipe from REM uh, suggested the name Concrete Blonde for for them. Um, let me see a couple other things I want to make sure I didn't forget to mention here before moving on. Um, yeah, so in a lot uh, for me, Concrete Blonde, um, I didn't get to see them live. I mean, I discovered them back um, a bloodletting. Obviously, Joey when that um, video was on MTV a lot when I was in high school, so that was what originally attracted um, me to the band and the. Um, just the fact that I was a bass player who sang and uh, and seeing her in the video playing bass and sing I think was also was a really a cool thing but I never got to see them live until they uh, reunited and I think it was 2003 I saw them at a venue in Tempe here that I played at uh, several times called the Marquee Theater great great show and then I actually had the privilege of opening for uh, Jeanette Napolitano she had a solo album that came out called came out I think it was 2005, 2006 called Scarred, which had a, just an amazing cover of Coldplay's The Scientist. Definitely write that down right now or open up another window and get that ready because her version of The Scientist is so bare, raw, emotional, just phenomenal. So me and my brother in Audra, we got to open up for her. She did an acoustic show at a venue in Scottsdale, Arizona called Anderson's Fifth Estate, which Close down or change names. I think it's Anderson Fifth State, anyways. Now again, so, anyways, um, so we got to open for her with an acoustic set, and um, and she came out, and I'll, I'll never forget because she was she was playing and the monitors were were feeding back, and she just told them to shut the monitors off, and her voice was so powerful that she didn't even need the monitors, you know, to hear herself because her voice is just like, just so so intense and just really um, mesmerizing to watch her perform. I think she even did a Janis, if I remember correctly, I think she did a, a Janis Joplin uh, track a cappella. but uh, she's really um, just a really intense performer. And um, I remember after the show, the promoter came up and said that she was watching us from backstage and asked about us and, and enjoyed her set. So that was really cool. So um, let me see if there's any other things that I wanted to, uh, to touch on with this one. Uh, yeah, let me show you. <laughs> have to show you the trifecta here. So we have vinyl, CD, and the old cassette. So that is uh, free in all three, all three formats right there. So definitely look out for this one. If you're new to Concrete Blonde, I uh, never heard them. You know, a couple tracks, like I said, check out Johnette's The Scientist, but also from this album, check out the track Happy Birthday, check out God is a Bullet, and then um, <clears throat> it's a little bit hard to find free on vinyl, but you should be able to run across um, us, across it on CD. Um, Bloodletting is very, very easily available, and the tracks Joey, uh, Caroline, Tomorrow Wendy, Darkening of the Light, Bloodletting the Vampire Song are all just just phenomenal stuff. So I think I'll leave um, I'll think I'll, I think I'll leave it leave it right there. So once again, Concrete Blonde free. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning in and subscribing. I'll uh, I'll see you guys soon.